Hi Flosstube, it's me, Gleeza from Made with Glee. Um, surprise, I'm late making a video. Yeah, I'm late. I do apologize. I know uh, in my last video I said I was going to try to make a video around the 20th of this month, but when I made that video I didn't realize how early Thanksgiving was this year and um, the video didn't get made. I, I just could, I did not have the time. There's a lot going on, of course, with the holidays. There's baking and cooking, and um, I cook for 18 people. I do this every year. Um, a lot of my family, I told you already, works with uh, the elderly, and they don't get the day off, so I tend to cook really early, and I do Thanksgiving lunch because I have to... Um, make like to-go containers and send it off to my family you know who's not around so yeah, it's very busy and very stressful and I'm my turkey is done by like 11 30 in the morning so as you uh, could tell I don't get a lot of sleep during that week um, yeah so I didn't make a video I do apologize for that but I am here now and um, let's start right off the bat with the past the stash which was for um, a magazine and a pattern and I did do a random number generator and for the magazine cross stitch and needlework Jilly Pepper 5353 congratulations you one girl um you can contact me I think I think you're on my Instagram um yeah I'm sure you're on my Instagram via Instagram with your address or I'll have my email in the uh, descri uh, description you can send me your address and I'll get that out to you and for special delivery which was the cute Christmas gnomes with the candy cane I'm stitching this next year um Three people showed me it showed interest in that and congratulations Stitch and Mommy. By the way, I love your videos. I love that temperature thing that you're doing. Awesome. Alrighty, so what have I been up to? Um I did what I did not tell you guys in my last video of what's been keeping me busy is that um a condo was bought for my mom. She, uh, I told you, you guys know already, I'm an only child. My mom lives up north in New York. I live down here in Florida. Um, she's getting up in age and, you know, at some point she's going to have to move down here. And while, she, yes, she's very active and healthy and, you know, independent, um, sometimes you have to force the hand. So a uh, condo was bought and I took it upon myself to go ahead and do renovations to it. So we pulled out all the carpets and the tile, put down new um, flooring. I gave her a new kitchen, so new cabinets, uh, granite countertop, new lighting, fans, um, new plumbing in the bathrooms, you know, stuff like that. You guys know what renovations are about. So. Um, it's still a work in, pro uh, in progress. There's still a few things to be done. The majority is done. I mean, somebody can move in if they wanted to like right now um, and still be able to finish off the couple little things that I have left to do. But yeah, um, so that's been keeping me busy. Um, if you know anything about renovations, you know how much time it takes running around, meeting contractors, waiting on contractors, um, yeah, it's just been absolutely crazy. And I feel like I did not stitch at all. But I did do some stitching. And I do have things to show you. And I did accomplish some stuff. I just feel like I have not done enough. I have really have not had time to do my own thing. Um, but it is what it is. There's times in my life where I have absolutely nothing to do. And... When that time comes around again, I'll do all the stitching and all the crafting I want. But until then, I make do with what I have. So, uh, what have I been up to? I did do some sewing. So let me show you all the sewing because it does have to do with my cross stitch. Um, in my last video, or one of my last videos, I showed you a madame. Well, let me hold this this way. It's easier. 
I have a little tiny Christmas tree I bought from the dollar store, by the way. It's not going to remain like this because most of these ornaments are being gifted. Um, I showed you in one of my last videos, last or the one previous, a free pattern that I got from Madame Lafie. I think it's called Bayberries. And what I did was made it into a little pillow with some sparkly holly fabric, added a glitter ribbon and a holly button. So that's my Madame Lafie part of the sewing that I did do. Um, I cross stitched this piece a while ago. I just never put it together. Um, this is out of the cross stitcher to th November 2016 issue and I'll grab it for you in a second so you can see which cover so you'll know. Um, it was a free kit so I stitched a reindeer, the felt and the fabric came as part of the free kit with the magazine and I finished it the way they um, suggested which was like this funky long skinny heart shape. So I sewed that. Um, You've seen this guy before, I just hang him on the tree because he has to go down my, on my big tree when I actually get around to decorating it. Um, this is from a book called One Hour Cross Stitch. And this is also a pillow that I made. It's kind of like a few, uh, a few cross stitches and a lot of black work. I did it in DMC gold metallic thread. And I used some star sequins and beads that I had on hand to embellish it. And again, the same holly fabric made into a little pillow. There's a second one out of the same book. This one's like more like a flower. And I used sequins and beads, a little embellishment, gold ribbon, same holly fabric on the back. So those are the ornaments that I made. Um, Ba Humbug is from last year. I'm sure you remember this one. I think it was like in my first video that I made. Which, by the way, I am close to having a floss tube anniversary, which I can't believe. Wow. It's been a year. So, Ba Humbug. And there's one more. This one is also out of Cross Stitcher Magazine. There's a Christmas alphabet. And for this one, I use one of these... Um, gold ready-made frames. I got mines from AC Moore. I don't know if Joann's or Michael's carries them. I don't recall seeing them in either of those stores. Maybe Hobby Lobby, but again, I got mines from AC Moore. And I did the H, which is for a family uh, that's related to me. This is their last name, so they get the H gold ribbon and another holly button so pretty much that's what I accomplished um, when it comes to finishing my cross stitch I didn't get a chance to really personify or bonify anything I do want to I, I did want to make a flat fold this year but I don't think that's happening because I'm not finishing anything else um, one, two videos ago, I showed you guys my Vervaco, Vervaco, whatever, however you say it, needlepoint pillow um, that I stitched. He's so cute. Um, I finished it up into a pillow. I found this snowflake flannel fabric and I made it into an envelope style pillow because I would like to perhaps do some more needlepoint in pillow form. And I really did enjoy stitching that Vervaco kit. This took me a week to make. So I'm thinking maybe a seasonal one. I have four different pillows. This will be my Christmas and then, you know, something for spring, summer, fall. I haven't decided. I'm trying not to spend any more money. Um, until January when, you know, I decide which stitch alongs and whatever I'm going to do. So, yay for a finish, fully finished item. So that's my pillow. I still have the felt stockings from my nieces to uh, finish. And bear with me, I dropped some stuff. I had a bend down. Okay. 
Okay. Um, the cross stitching magazine that I got the H and um, the heart reindeer. This is the magazine I was talking about. And one hour cross stitch with the two black uh, and gold ornaments came this um, I picked this up from Better World Books about two three years ago for under five bucks so uh, you might find this on Amazon or you can check Better World Books it's called one hour cross stitch it doesn't even say who it's by can I even tell you it's an Oxmore House book, one hour cross stitch. That's pretty much all it says. Anyway, they have in there um, those ornaments, but also they have these mini fruits. And what I ended up doing was for my mother-in-law, since I'm not doing a handmade gift for my mom, she got a new kitchen and new floor. She's good. Um, this is for my mother-in-law. I took the random fruits. These are again one hour design. So I think I did this all on Black Friday because I became a vegetable on Black Friday. I literally crashed and burned, slept most of the day, and then when I finally woke up, I decided to do some one hour cross stitching. So between Friday and Saturday, I did this. And it turned out cute. I do have a pot holder. Um, I'm not going to stitch these grapes, it's just way too intensive for me right now so I'm gonna do uh, again some random fruits across this uh, from the one hour cross stitch book and with the towel that is gonna be a gift for my mother-in-law so what else have I worked on my projects let's see well before that let's get straight into the infamous baby sampler for the baby who came early even if he came on time, I still would not have been done. Um, little sports. And I made it to the top. Yay. Um, I'm getting there. I really, I if I give it maybe three, four days of four hours each, maybe, I could technically possibly finish just before Christmas. I don't know. I don't have time right now to do that. My mom is in town for another uh, two weeks, and um, yeah, there's no time. There's just no time. And prior to her uh, being here, my cousin was also here with her baby. Um, I did the renovations, just life, and my son came down for the holidays. It's just been busy. Um, I did get to stitch a little bit while my nephew was here. I babysat for a day, which was so much fun. Um, this is Holly Pixie, what she's supposed to look like by Nora Corbett, Mirabilia Designs, or well, no, she's a Nora Corbett. Um, and this is my Holly Pixie, and the only change I've made to her is basically I changed her skin tone, so she's a brown girl. And that's as far as I got in her. It's possible she could be done before Christmas? I don't think so. I think she's going to be like my Sue Hillis, which I hung up on the wall up here, um, Calories Don't Count for Christmas. She's going to be like when, that project where I finish it up in the first week of January. Um, stitch alongs. My Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, Happily Ever After style, I have not touched in, since September. I really like that one too. Um, like I said before, it's not my favorite. I still do like it, though, and I do enjoy it, and I do want it to finish. I just haven't gotten around to it. Connie G's Rainbow Sal. Um, I'm trying to keep up. I did get October, September and October done. This is my start on November. Today is the 29th of November. This is where I'm at. You guys, there's just not enough hours in the day, not enough of me to do all of me things, but I'm trying. Um, the only other project that I touched at all, 
I didn't get to work on anything else. And I really want to work on my Ganesh. It's been calling me and I just haven't had a chance to do it. But um, is my 12 Days of Christmas, uh, which is out of Cross Stitch Favorites Magazine. And this is by Maria Diaz. Um, Nine Ladies Dancing. I showed you that one, I believe. And I finished October's, which is Ten Lords Sleeping. And for the month of November, that's all I have, people. A border. It's possible. And all things are possible. Yes, I do admit that all things are possible. But some things are also impossible and unlikely to get done. But it is possible that I could finish this before the month is over. Um, I say that will I have the time to actually do it? I don't know. And I've been slacking on my Instagram and not keeping you guys updated. I just, my phone gets put down and forgotten about quite easily. Alright, so what else? That's it. That's all the progress. That is everything. See, I told you I didn't have much to show you. Yet I did do some stuff. I just didn't do enough. And then my hair looks horrible. Um, it's due to the renovations. I literally have been washing my hair every day. And I have not been taking the time to refresh my color. Hence why it's all faded and halfway down, and it's the cross between red, purple, and pink. Who knows anymore? And, um, yeah, I'm a hot mess. Um, what else? What else is going on with me? I watched a lot of floss tube during Thanksgiving week because I was doing a lot of baking in the kitchen, and so I had my iPad. And I have to tell you, though, I don't log into YouTube when I'm on my iPad, so... I watched a ton of videos, none of which I liked, commented, or can go back and be certain until I go back on actually like, logging and try to watch them again. So I don't know. Um, I am not caught up with anyone. Uh, I think everyone has at least two videos. Unless, I mean, unless you made video, your last video was in October. I probably saw that, but if it's like anything from the beginning of November on, especially if you're one of the people who makes videos um, weekly, bi week, uh, t every two weeks, or you know, more than that, or um, I'm pretty sure I'm not caught up with you. Um, if you're one of the people that do a video maybe once every four or six weeks, like, or you haven't been around in a while and you just made a video, I probably saw your video. So. Let's see, can I remember anyone who I watched? I kept up with Kay's Cross Stitch. I kept up with the Weasleys. Um, who else did I watch? Trisha Tree out. Three out. Tree, tree, tree. I'm from the West Indies. We, we can't say the number three. We say tree. Uh, Trisha, the three owl threads, I believe her name is. I caught up with her. Yeah, D squared, you guys, I did watch. Oh, there's so many people. I watched a bunch of you guys. Um, but I'm not sure who I'm caught up with. Yeah, so that's my that's my floss tube thing. Sarah, little snips. Yes, I did watch, I think, most of your videos. I, I think I finally logged in just to comment on one of them. Um, just so you know, I'm still around and I am watching you, girl. We should definitely do that stitch along next year. But you can set it up because I... I don't, I am not good at setting up or keeping up any of those things. So feel free. I will stitch along. I can't promise internet um, anything else other than I'll be stitching or trying to. What else did I do? Ah, I do have, and but this is not cross stitch. Actually, yeah. It is, okay, we're going to go down the rabbit hole because I fell off the wagon. And I'm going to explain to you how I fell off the wagon. Um, 
I'm going to reference again Kara from Case Cross Stitch. Patterns can't travel alone. They can't. They need a companion always. You can't buy one thing, can you? Not just one. It just never works out for me. Anyhow, um, felt stockings. You guys knew that I was making felt stockings for my niece. I finished that one. I'm working one on one for her little baby brother. But I also have uh, my other nephew, the one who came to visit. His birthday was on Thanksgiving and or around Thanksgiving. Like, yeah, it was like a day or two before Thanksgiving. So, um, I made him a felt stocking, which I gave him, so I don't have it to show you. It was Rudolph, which is really cute. Mom, her, uh, my cousin, she loved the Rudolph, the original, the TV show, you know, that claymation thing they did. She loved that one, so I thought this was cute for the baby. So I made him this, and then I decided I wanted to do ornaments for them mom and baby um, together but I didn't want to cross stitch so I figured it was going to take really long so I found this on 123 stitch it's also felt and this was really quick and easy to make so I made these for them to go with the ornament but when I ordered when I had to order this from 123 stitch um, like I said patterns can't travel alone so I picked up a few more things from 123stitch. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did, I did, I did. I also got... Good evening. I love this. It's so bright and colorful. And I like food. I like food a lot. Um, and I like stitching food. I think stitching food is cool. I do. Oh well. Um, so I'm going to be stitching this. Don't know when. But I like it. And I got it. I also got. And this is because my mom saw my. Um, that vase thing that I showed you guys the last time that I tried to Priscilla Fy. At Priscilla and Chelsea Fy with the magnets. Um, the seasonal. From just cross stitch where I the blocks blocks those block things where I did them as flats and um, I had spooky and I also did autumn I am working on Mary which was in this month's issue of just cross stitch magazine but I have a border I, I mean I'm not even gonna pull that out to show you because that's all I have is a border on that I just don't I, I don't have time to stitch um, but yes, I was talking to my mom, she saw it, she liked it, and she said she liked seasonal, she liked the idea of being able to change stuff out. So I decided to pick this pattern up, and I, instead of making it into one piece, I'm going to make them individual. And I'm going to find something that I can priscilla -fy and chelsea and, you know, make it changeable for her. And this is going to be mom's either official housewarming gift when she moves in or Christmas gift whenever I get around to it, people I am I'm not making commitments or anything else and nobody better have a baby that's all I'm saying my family you guys need to take, take a chill pill on the babies um, yeah because they're gonna get a sampler when they're five okay um, also now this is not I told you I fell off the damn wagon, but um, I did not pay for this anytime recently. I bought these patterns online from Stitching Bits, Stitching, Stitching Bits and Bobs back in July. I did not get them until recently, and I bought one pattern in particular back in July because I had wanted to stitch it. Uh, start stitching it this Halloween but um, you know what I don't care it arrived it was late so what but um, yeah it was it took a long time to get here but um the way things worked out I wouldn't have been able to stitch it anyway so I got this guy 
I love, love, love him. It's Trick or Treat uh, by Pascal Muguero, and it's um, charted by Lena Lawson Needle Art. Needle, yeah, ne Lena Lawson Needle Art. So, but I got this from Stitching Bits and Bobs. And I also got this one, which is the Gnome Couple. And like I said, they were late arriving, but if I was in a hurry for something and, you know, I really had nothing else to do and needed to start one of those, I would have been mad, but yeah, who cares? It arrived. Um, also, I went to my local Needleworks shop, Cross Stitch Cupboard. Um, I had no intentions to going, but what happened was I'm stitching that crown, cross and crown needlework piece. I shown it to you. Anyway, that thing calls for three charms. Um, a cross. I believe a key. A crown, perhaps? And some hearts. Uh, I picked up the hearts at Michael's. Um, I think I got a crown at Hobby Lobby. But I could not find the right size cross and the same finish. And... I had asked my needle workshop to look for it and she tried several times and she couldn't find the one that the pattern called for. Um, but like on I, when was it? When did I go to her last? Like I can't even remember. August when I was there, um, she we looked through like catalogs and stuff and we found something that was similar and she said she was gonna order it for me. So that little charm came in, like a two dollar charm. So they called me to I mean, my charm was in, and I'm not driving 30 minutes to my local needlework shop for just a charm. I'm sorry. That's gas money I'm spending for a $2 charm. I have to buy stuff, so I bought stuff. Sorry. Not sorry. Early Christmas gift to myself, I guess. Um, it is what it is. Like I said, I justify it because I cannot drive 30 minutes to my local needle workshop, a $2 charm, and not pick up anything else. So what I got was, and I see a lot of you guys stitching Prairie Schooler. I do like them. Um, not, I'm not a primitive stitcher or anything like that, but there are some designs that I like, and I do like seasonal. So I found, uh, well, there's Prairie's year one and two, but... I find that I happen to like Prairie's uh, year two better than the first one. So I picked this up at a very reasonable price, if you can see that. Um, I also got the Prairie Schooler. This is St. Nicholas. Uh, this will be for ornaments next year. Um, it was just there. I picked it up. I also got... Um, this it's Cricut Collection. It's a welcome bell pull where the O part is changeable. So you have seasonal stuff going on that you can um, stitch and change it out. So I also thought this maybe mom, maybe myself, I don't know, but I liked it. I got it. Um, while I was there, um, the lady in the cross stitch uh, store said that, well, when we had last spoke, um, I told her I was looking at, you know, like what Joan Elliott pattern she had, and I was looking for the reader, and she didn't have it, but she said she'd be ordering some stuff soon. So anyway, while I was there, she said, oh, by the way, um, I did get in some Joan Elliott's, and she got the one I wanted, so I had to buy it. And this is the reader, and um, I love, love, love this particular design. I think she's very Indian. I mean, there's a few of these in the series, and they have a very Indian vibe to them. Um, the dresses, the border, this one with all her pillows and cushions. It's very Indian except for her blonde hair and her fair skin. So I'm going to change her hair to brown and black, maybe toss in some reds, who knows. Um, and I'm going to darken her skin tone 
and she is going to be a gorgeous Indian girl because that's what I think she looks like, a gorgeous Indian girl. Um, and she's reading a book, and I'm a big nerd. I am a huge bookworm, so this speaks to me. I wish cross-stitch designers, all of them, yes, every single one of you cross-stitch designers that do people or, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Ladies, uh, angels, whatever, people, things that have to do with people would give us the options of changing colors, skin colors. Um, everybody in the world is not white. I'm sorry. We need some variety. And yes, there's some great African-American designs. But where the hell is my Indian people? Where are my Arabs? You know... Cross-stitch designers, yes, you've dabbled into Asian heavily, and you've touched into Africa a little bit, but what about the rest of us? I mean, there's South American Angel, which I love because she's like, hello, we're a whole freaking continent down there with a wide, diverse bunch of people. Come on, you know, we could be a little bit pinker, a little bit browner, a little bit yellower, um... So please, cross stitch designers, if any of you ever, ever, ever watch my video, please, 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 give us the option. You can design it the way you want and put that on the on the cover. Um, that's great. And your stitcher who stitches it can do whatever color they want to do, but at least give us the options. It would be nice to see things charted or at least suggested, you know, color suggestions without me having. I mean, thanks to Minnie Gray and Crafty Curator. And there's a few other ladies, and I can't remember your names, that do um, some of the African designs and do color conversions. Um, thank you guys for, you know, opening my eyes to the fact that I can do that. But Joan Elliott, I probably would have never bought this if I didn't think I could have change her and make her into an Indian girl even though I freaking love this design and adore it and you know anyway I rambled there and I went off on a tangent and I apologize for that I also got from my crusted store and I just think I need to have this on the door to my craft room so and maybe I'll change husband to family because I think the husband knows how much I spend, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this is a must for every stitcher. I think we all need to have this somewhere in our house. Somehow, it, I mean, the sentiment, it's just so appropriate. All right, so that's it. That's my haul. I bought stuff. I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but I did anyway. Um, but, but... I did not buy a single thing on Black Friday, and I did not buy a single thing on Cyber Monday. Yep, I know, Heaven and Earth had a sale. I know, Clouds Factory had a sale. Frosted Pumpkin, did you? I don't know, but there were sales, and I didn't buy a single thing, even though I was very, very tempted. Shopping carts full of stuff. I left them alone. I just bought stuff that I didn't necessarily need because I have so much other stuff. Oh, the rabbit hole. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so that's, uh, that's my whole uh, shopping experience thing going there for you. Oh, one other thing. Um, in my October video, I showed you guys, I think it was Buddha. That I, and I said I started it during my ch attempts not to shop. I did not. I realized that was previously started, but it was in the box of starts that I picked up. But that was not one of the ones I started when I was trying not to shop. Um, so I felt entitled that I could start something else when I wanted to shop. And I did. And... 
I don't know when I'll get around to actually stitching this. It will be next year because I'm only doing one Mirabilia at a time. But Lady of Mystery, she got started. I kitted her up and that was, again, that alleviated. That was like one day of me wanting to shop with me kidding her up. And then the urge was strong again and so I started. And that's all I have. Um... And this is on a piece of 16 count Ada that I dyed myself because I do my mirrors on Ada because I like Ada. Um, and I have Ada and it's cheaper. And so, yeah. That was a big enough piece of fabric, I believe. I hope it is. I got to double check, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it is because I, I, um, I would not have started it in the fabric if I didn't like look 10 million times at it. So, okay, rambling, rambling, rambling. Um, 35 minutes. Yeah, um, I think that is it, you guys, for stitching-related sewing. I haven't knitted. Um, I haven't crocheted much, did I? Oh, yes, I made booties for a baby, a friend. Um... That's about all I've done. Like I said, it's been very busy. The renovations are taking up a lot of my time. Um, I can't take stitching over there because it's like, you know, it's dust and there's no chairs and I'm doing stuff when I'm there and when I'm supposed to be waiting on people, you know, I try to time it so I, I'm not waiting too long and then they stand me up and I end up waiting long anyway and I should have kept stitching in my car but I didn't um, because my car is full of renovation related stuff, you know, so it's like, yeah, it's a no-win situation for me when it comes to that stuff. Um, until it's completely over, I will be here and there and all over the damn place. Um... I think that's it. Oh, no, it's not. A Stitch Too Far, Ingeborg. Um, she made a really great video. I love all of Ingeborg's videos, but she was talking about uh, the Blackface Peep Guide, their Christmas tradition that they do um, in the beginning of December. And um, it is racist. Uh, and I commented in her video that I was going to share a little bit of reverse racism um, that's in the islands, in the Caribbean, and probably elsewhere that experience, uh, col um, you know, the, col the whole colonialism colony thing going on um, in my country, Guyana. It was settled first by the Dutch. And the Dutch brought African slaves over um, and started their sugar plantations. You know, the whole West Indies trading thing with the sugar and all of that stuff. Anyway, so um, the Dutch were slave owners. And the okay, how do I start this? Okay, as I grew, I, I grew up with my grandmother in a very rural part of Guyana, um, countryside. So, very superstitious people in the villages and stuff. And as a child, I remember there are several trees that I was told to never go near, don't play near that tree. Don't ever cut that tree. Don't try to make a marking on that tree. Um, stay away from that tree because the Dutchman lives there. Um, there's also uh, that particular type of tree, and I believe it's a cotton silk tree. Um, it's a really big tree. There are some of them like. They'll be in the roadway, and the, the, the road is divided around the tree because they the people, when they were developing the city, they refused to cut down the tree because of the superstition of the Dutchmen. So the story is, uh, the legend story, the Dutchman, Dutchman, as a plantation slave owner, uh, was very 
greedy, of course, and um, they would rape and abuse his slaves and be all about the gold. Um, and uh, he would, the story is basically the Dutchman would kill a slave and bury him with his treasure so that the slaves, the spirit of the slave could protect his treasure from others and keep them away. So that he would choose a tree, this particular cotton silk tree, bury his treasure and with it a slave that he murdered. So when that Dutchman died, the spirit of the slave was freed and the spirit of the Dutchman came back to the tree. No matter where he was in the world, his spirit came back to that tree and he was tied to that tree. So you couldn't do anything to the tree because then you'd be haunted by the Dutchman. So if like you had one of these cotton silk trees on your property or nearby and bad things started happening in the area, like, you know, a chicken disappeared or you know, I don't know, your family got sick or whatever, they would blame it on the Dutchman spirit, somebody was messing with the tree, whatever. So, this, we basically grew up fearing white man. I said it, people, yes. Um, we grew up fearing you evil, yes, you heard me, evil white blue-eyed devils. Because um, in a country where the majority of the people are non-Caucasian. Um, it's like America and, and certain European countries where you're all white and then you have a brown person come there. You look at them differently and more than likely negatively. And the same happened in the colonies um, in the West Indies where there was slavery. And indentureship is that the slaves and the indentured people look the lower echelon of society looked at those Caucasians as white devils and I'm 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 choosing my words very selectively in telling you guys this because um, it also applies to missionaries um, you know I understand People think that they're doing the, the work of their God and they're doing good and whatever, but people on the other side do not see it the same way. So I grew up being scared of the white man. I was terrified, terrified of Santa Claus. Terrified of Santa Claus. Um, I guess maybe it's our British Dutch heritage that Santa Claus was more of a scary figure than the jolly American version of Santa Claus that we have. Um, the American version of Santa Claus is, you know, the guy drinking Coca-Cola and smiling with the polar bears and, you know, coming down chimneys and giving presents. So he's very happy and jolly, while in other cultures, Santa Claus is a little bit more intimidating and scary. Um, for whatever reasons and there are most multitude of reasons why I, I think that's the way but one of them is the reverse racist racism of it all um, so I know these topics are difficult I know some people don't like to hear and talk about you know touchy stuff and feel e people are easily offended and I am not easily offended I go out of my way to offend the shit out of people because in order to change and progress as a society and people as a whole, we need to challenge ourselves and we need to challenge our beliefs and we need to question every single thing. And um, we can't hide from our history. We, it's very, very ugly. Um, and so we need to acknowledge it. We need to talk about it and we need to progress. And things happen in a cycle. You will always notice throughout history there is always, like, can you believe this slavery in Libya again? Like, they're actually selling people. Like, what the fuck? You know, like I said, things happen in, in cycles. And we as, as a society, human beings, need to progress. So when these cycles come around again, we say, uh-uh, we're not going to tolerate that. That That's that's wrong people should not be sold 
Um, we are not property. We're not cattle just because based on the skin color or where we're from or our ethnicity or our social status or how rich or how poor. I mean, I'll probably lose more followers than I'll ever gain here on Flossy by by expressing my, my views. Um, but it is what it is. This is me. Um, this is why I warn you guys about my Instagram. My Instagram is me. It is not a floss tube cross stitching only um, account. Also, this particular YouTube account, um, I, I it's not gonna. Be, it cannot be my. I I am not only about cross stitch. Look around me. I am about a lot of things and um, I just recently went and changed my settings on YouTube to private because I watch a batload of crazy shit. Um, everything from Mandela Effect, conspiracy theories, UFOs, Bigfoot, um, you know, the Antichrist, religion, anti-religion, um, Gardening. I watch Indian women who cook and clean their houses and they make entire freaking videos about cleaning their house. I watch random things like that. I watch home tours in Korea and Japanese apartment hunting and, you know, I watch foreign language stuff. I, I'm all over the damn place and um, I... I don't want to be someone who spreads fake news and a lot of the, the conspiracy theories that are out there right now is based on fake news and a lot of YouTube videos that proclaim truth. <laughs> There's a bunch of batshit crazy people out there. I mean, they're flat earthers, there's Mandela effect, there's, you know, there is so much. It's Pizzagate, there's like you guys, um, I, I mean, if, if, when you go down the rabbit hole, I, I'll just say it's a very, very deep, I have not reached the bottom yet, it keeps going, there's layers and layers and layers upon layers of stuff, and the only thing I can suggest to anyone who ever goes down those paths of seeking knowledge and trying to enlighten themselves and educate themselves on what else is out there besides your own little insulated world is to question everything and question everything does not mean ignore facts um, facts are facts and that's it so if you can use logic critical thinking actual research when people say research they I don't mean go look at 10 YouTube videos on the same topic that is not research research is actually opening books going to the library digging further who came up with this first who wrote this how did this theory came about how can I prove it how can I disprove it um, yeah I just went off on a total tangent, you guys. This is... Am I even going to put this video up? I don't know. But, yeah, 50 minutes of me rambling. Wow. Well, guys, um... That's it. That's all I have to say. I'm going to cut it here before I keep talking. And lose further... More of you people. Um... Bye.